No, every chapter in the story of uh, methane on Mars has been a surprise. Uh, from some time ago, there were reports of plumes in the atmosphere of methane. There were reports of uh, patches when orbiters looked at it and spikes that we reported, as you just mentioned. Every one of them a surprise, but problematic in the sense, frustrating, because none of them were repeatable in time and space. They seem to show that methane was misbehaving. It was sporadic or um, almost random pulses and, and patches were showing up. So today we're announcing a discovery of a repeatable, identifiable seasonal pattern in the methane measurements. And we can look here at the graphic and we can see that. It's in the lower background level because most of the time we're not looking at spikes. And we see this low background level. You can see from the winter to the summer this growth and the big surprise, too, is not only have we got this wonderful repeatability, but the seasonal cycle changes by a factor of three. That's a huge change, completely unexpected. And what it does, it gives us a key to unlocking the mysteries associated with Mars methane, because now we have something to test our models and our understanding against. Uh, we've seen the uh, seasonal variation. And uh, we've tried to look at the data and come up with some explanations. And we've been able to rule out some of the, some of the sources. We don't actually think the meteoritic or delivery of interplanetary dust that can produce methane in the atmosphere, as Jen said. We don't think that's so important because we wouldn't expect to see a large seasonal variation. We might see 20%. Instead, we're seeing this massive uh, change in the, in the methane signal. And so what we consider, we look at the data and the, the idea that best fits our data is, a, is the idea of subsurface storage. So way under the ground, under Mars, there's, there's methane that's trapped. It may be trapped as clathrates or other materials. We don't know if that methane is ancient. We don't know if it's modern. It could be either. And we also don't know if that methane was created from rock, water rock chemistry like serpentinization or it was cre created by uh, methanogen microbes. We cannot distinguish that. So, but the methane leaks or seeps up to the surface, we believe, and finds its way through cracks and fissures. And eventually, when it gets to the surface, we're then in a situation where the surface temperature can modulate or especially amplify the release of methane. So this is a, a, an exciting time because we have this uh, the seasonal cycle to constrain some of the theories um, and of the sources and sinks of this important gas. Uh, if you look at Curiosity, around about waist height, there are two inlets, two little valves, and these valves allow the Martian atmosphere into our sample cell. Once it gets into SAM and into the tunable laser spectrometer in particular, we have tiny little infrared laser beam that multipasses, it bounces 81 times between these mirrors, and that amplifies its sensitivity. So when you look at the laser light on a detector, you can scan the laser and look for this, the spectrum of methane. And the, the resolution, the spectral resolution is so high that we see individual methane lines, and in particular, we see a fingerprint of three lines together that can only be from methane. So our measurement is unambiguous. The signals we see, they come from methane and nothing else. And, and secondly, we measure them with uh, high precision. So let's go, to the, let's go to the two different scenarios as to what would be causing the methane. It, I guess one is that we have a seasonal cycle because bacteria under the surface of Mars would be more active in the summer. Is, is that the idea? That's a possible idea. But again, we cannot distinguish that from uh, serpentinization, the, re the reaction of water with olivine, to produce serpentine and hydrogen. Once you get the hydrogen released in both, both of, um, in that reaction, it can be catalyzed either through a metal catalyst to produce methane, that's the abiological route, or it can be catalyzed through enzymes in uh, the microbes uh, in, the, in the cell potential. So just sort of putting that into slightly simpler terms, if you have water that's interacting with volcanic minerals like olivine, you can also get similar methane that's trapped in the soil and preferentially comes up in the summer? Yes, yes, that's exactly right. Right. But we are, so, we're hoping that we'll see uh, more, uh, we'll get more results in the future on this, especially from uh, other missions. And as far as um, testing for the biological 
um, source or not, um, there are several more steps that can be made. We can look at the carbon-13 isotope ratio, for example, that could be suggestive of biological activity. And we can look at uh, the accompaniment of other gases. So we have, um, and we can sit uh, on the surface in curiosity and maybe one day we'll see a plume that's large enough where we can measure that carbon-13 ratio ourselves. So there's lots of exciting uh, ways forward. But at this, at this moment, again, the biological option is, is being held. It hasn't been ruled out.